Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from this month's sponsor, Ethico. In the delicate arena of compliance, every conversation matters. Traditional methods can leave callers feeling unheard, but Ethico changes the game. Our empathetic interview technique reshapes compliance calls into powerful, compassionate interactions, ensuring no crucial detail is missed. It's about creating a conversation that matters, that resonates, that makes a difference. Be the change in your compliance approach. See the transformation for yourself at ethico.com slash CPN. Book a demo, try our free ROI calculator, and explore the white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance. The Daily Compliance News for April 4, 2024. The self-reporting is key edition. And we begin with that story from the Risk and Compliance Journal over at the Wall Street Journal, Mingi Sun reporting that a financial firm's decisions to disclose record-keeping violations directly to the SEC can potentially reduce the fine it received by a significant amount. Sanjay Wadwa, Deputy Director of the SEC's Enforcement Division, said on Wednesday that regulators assess fine in such cases, and he was responded to a critique from the defense bar that said the SEC was picking numbers at random. He said, no, we are discounting those who self-disclose. And that's a pretty good message, literally, for anyone who finds himself in either the crosshairs, not even crosshairs, but in the uh, violation of SEC rules and regs or uh, violates laws subject to DOJ prosecution. Next up from Reuters, South African's parliament speaker has resigned amid a corruption probe. The Speaker of the National Assembly has resigned from her position amid an investigation into alleged corruption during her tenure as Defense Minister. Her home was raided last month by investigators as a part of a corruption inquiry. She claims that her resignation is, of course, no indication or admission of guilt uh, at the charges being leveled against her. She, uh, the resignation is effective immediately, and she's also stepping down from Parliament. Next up from Boeing, how do you rebuild trust? Well, when it comes to customers, the CEO of Boeing has scrapped plans for formal meetings um, with leaders of the largest air, uh, airline customers so that he can address a crisis of confidence which culminated in a sweeping management shakeup. The ch- new chairman, Steve Molenkoff, is reaching out directly to CEOs of American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, United Airlines, and Alaska. He is a former, uh, C- uh, uh, former director at Qualcomm, and, uh, or rather CEO, and he's been on the Boeing board since 2012. He's got a lot of work to do, but it shows that once you lose trust, things can get very dicey very quickly. And our final story comes to us from ESPN, that former Spanish Football Federation President Luis Rubiales has been detained by police after returning to Spain as part of an ongoing corruption probe. He, of course, is the um, unwanted kisser of the Spanish soccer team star. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, this month's sponsor for the entire Compliance Podcast Network is Ethico. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website and Get the white paper. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.